Welcome to 7 Star Fitness. I'm Keegan, and this is the Deep Dive. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Deep Dive is, which is everyone, because this is literally the first one that's ever been done by me so how could you know what it is this is where i go onto the internet uh, reddit my emails comment sections anything that i can find i go deep into the comment sections deep into the threads deep into the emails deep into it find some obscure questions comments ideas content that seems like it would be fun or interesting to answer and then i using my 12 plus years of experience in the fitness industry give you guys an answer as you could probably imagine this is going to be fitness related content so strap in uh and get ready to have some fun now uh, i should probably mention that anything and everything I say is intended for entertainment purposes. Uh, nothing I say is meant to uh, act as replacement for th some sort of uh, guidance from a uh, healthcare professional, nor is it meant to cure any sort of disease. Uh, I'm not sure if that's enough of a disclaimer, um, but hey, that's gonna have to do for now, isn't it? Without further ado, let's uh, get the uh, old uh, window popped up. There we go, all right, and uh, Let's get this party started. As usual, we're not gonna start at the top. Although I guess, again, not really usual because this is the first time. So as per my own instructions, uh, let's dive into these comments and we're gonna go deep down into it. Shall we give the uh, scroll wheel a whole spin? Let's go deep, 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 deep. Deeper, damn it. We're going deep. You know what? God damn it, we're not that far in, but I'm gonna, I wanna jump in here anyways. 33 upvotes ain't, and that really is enough for me to jump in on this one. So the question here by Robocop is my dad. Such a pretty dope name. Um, Jim's reopening today, and I'll be going for the first time. Any advice on etiquette or any big do's or don'ts? Um, well, you know what? I'm not gonna read what the actual answers are just so I can go ahead and try to give some of the ones that would pop off the top of my head um one for the love of god re-rack your weights uh this goes for any dumbbells you use barbells if that should so apply if there's like a barbell rack uh plates uh plates for the love of god plates and while we're on this subject on re-racking if you're gonna re-rack your weights for the love of god do it in order Almost every gym that I've ever been to, there's like a beginning section and an end section. It usually starts like here, fives or tens or wherever the lowest increment is. And it goes up by usually fives. Sometimes if they have them, two and a half pound increments and then fives. But for some reason, there's this weird thing in the fitness industry where people forget that putting your weights away requires you to think about where they came from in the first place and return them to the place they came from in the first place so instead of putting down your 45 pound dumbbells in the 10 pound spot like a jag off maybe put them where the 45 place is and if it's taken by some other jagoff who's gone ahead and put his dumbbells there instead of yours which i mean sometimes they even do it when yours came from that place don't be a dick and then put the 45s in the 10 space move whatever is in the 45 space then put your weights there then you know what be a good dude or do that women can lift too not discriminating but let me get on that train go ahead and put those other weights where they should be sometimes this can set up a bit of a chain reaction and honestly if i'm just gonna kind of spitball off the top of my head i would say the best way to go about it is to put away three if you go yours then the next ones then the ones in the place where that one should be if you've gone that far and they're still mixed up you've already done your job there's only so much you can do i think at that point in time you're cleared to just drop those bad boys on the floor and be like all right, F this nonsense, I'm done. Y'all y'all done F this up so bad that I can only do so much. I mean, you have a workout to get into. Um, now that I think about it though, this is also back in the days when 
gyms didn't have really hard like 50 minute time slots which is going to be a thing a lot of us experience now that we're coming out of lockdown and gyms are opening under various restrictions usually time-based ones where you book a block of time and if you only have 50 minutes to work with i'd say two two because we all if we all play our part that's not going to have to happen anymore but i'd say two all right two so re-racking your weights uno dos clean your stuff and be diligent about it can we can we be diligent about it wipe down your bench all right that's the bare minimum use the cleaner wipe down your bench and then go about your business that's fine the bench and the machine if it's a machine the machine wipe that down um that deserves to be wiped get the paper towel and the cleaner wipe it down what other etiquette maybe when you're doing your workouts don't have every piece of equipment on lock just for you alone to do like the craziest giant set that's ever existed. Cause let's be real. Ain't gonna help you. Look, look at me. Ain't gonna help you. Stop that. You're just messing up other people's workouts so you can selfishly take up all the, like if you have more than two sets of dumbbells, three if it's really empty in that gym, you're a dick. You're a dick. You're a dick who's taking up too many dumbbells. You should just stop it. If you're doing drop sets, I guess at that point, you do what you can, but in between sets, you got to put them back. And if they're not there anymore, I guess you're just not doing that way for the drop set. Common courtesy dictates that you just got to keep other people in mind when you're doing these sorts of things. Um, but you know what? Let's let's see what else they got going. What other what other things are they, are they saying? Ah, okay, so re-rack your weights. Boom, easy. Wipe the bench after you. Okay, see, boom, another one. These are top-notch stuff right here. This is easy peasy 101 things. <laughs> if you haven't lifted in a while, gently ease into a program. You're not as strong as you think you are. If you, if I were you, go at 50%. Otherwise, Doms will make your life hell for the next week. Maybe cut back on volume two. <laughs> Don't curl in the squat rack. Okay, uh, to to go off of uh, just. Uh, just another throwaway 98. Um, I don't know if I would really call that like a etiquette or do or don't. I mean, it's great advice just to like pace yourself because you're right. Like when things are just opening up again, even if you were working out at home, if you weren't working out with the exact same setup and like the exact same way, it's like you didn't have like a barbell and plates and dumbbells at your disposal and various weights, you know, and the increments that you would get at a gym or very, very close to, you're going to be experiencing a very different stimulus than you would be at home at the gym and that that can be punishing so you often get in there and you know you're kind of fresh because maybe you've taken a little time off to you know you're really like raring to go and your muscles are all repaired and just absolutely just rip raring at their maximum capacity and then you just go out there and just tear down a workout and then dom's is just like Wow, 36 hours later, ripping you down, just keeping you locked in place for the next, like, Lord only knows how many days. I've seen for some people, it's like a full week, if not a little bit longer. But, yeah, pacing yourself, that can that can be super duper helpful. I, I definitely agree with that one. Uh, definitely going to have to agree with him on that one. And also, for the love of God, if you curl in the squat rack, you're a dick. Like, there's a million places that you could be curling. And why are you doing the squat rack, man? Like, that's just... That's, 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 that's so uncool. That's, it's very uncool. Just don't do it. All right. Squat rack is for squatting, deadlifts, other things of that nature where if you didn't have the rack set up, you just would be either screwed or very much put out by the, the, the whole setup and what you'd have to do to make it work. Not curls. For the love of God, not curls. What are you, Dom Mazzetti? Get out of here. Oh, word, this guy here. How do you even pronounce that? Nalcolor? Nalcolor? I'm gonna call you Nal. All right, uh, Nal says, if masks are required, please keep it on and over your nose. I know it can be annoying to breathe in, but it's more important to be safe if you're choosing to work out in public. God, yes. Now, bruh, now. Fire response, bruv. This deserves way more love. Let me hit you. Boom. Let me hit you with that up vote real quick. You, you 
very much deserve it because that one here this is one of those like kind of controversial things and one of those things that like i feel like gym folk are definitely getting real lax on i mean if it's if it's what the gym requires you're going into their space it doesn't matter what you think about your personal rights and freedoms and all that garbage this is a private business offering you their facility for a fee it's a transaction and it's all predicated on you obeying certain rules if the rule is wear the mask wear the mask just wear the damn mask and wear it properly now if you have a problem with it don't go to that gym if you don't agree with that don't go to that gym protest the idea that that gym is doing that but don't go into that gym and protest by not doing it you put other people at risk you look like a dick you break the rules of the gym they have absolutely no obligation to provide you any service whatsoever because they're a private business they can do whatever the hell they damn well please so don't be a dick wear your mask I personally have worn my mask for a number of workouts before things got fully shut down and there were just restrictions in the gyms. And yes, it is hard and it feels like you're hitting a brick wall. And I mean, cardiovascularly is just, it's super, super taxing. I get that. But why are you in the gym if not to get stronger and become more capable? And is this not just some form of resistance on your capability to breathe? And if that's not something you're looking to get strong enough to overcome, why are you working out? Just stop it. Just go home. Go home and be weak. Be weak by yourself at home, dog. Stop all of that. Stop all of this public nonsense. Go home and be weak there by your damn self. I feel like that's fair. Take your weakness. Keep it at home. Don't let it be near me. I don't want to see none of that getting heated again i need to calm down all right moving on another big scroll shall we okay let's let's go further let's further than that further than that we'll go like a full scroll i'm not gonna i'm generally i'm not gonna look at any of these scroll all right cool Ooh. okay i haven't really read this full one but i'm, I'm seeing some things that might be interesting from sayali nine Hey folks, I'm an 18 year old woman and I'm overweight. I'm wondering if it's a good idea to do some walking in the morning to get some steps in, eat at a caloric deficit, do an upper lower split and some cardio to finish the lifting. Would this be a good idea to lose some weight or do you think the cardio may perhaps be overkill? Any advice is much appreciated. Have a good day folks. Okay, first and foremost, Sayali9, hella polite. I like it. Just off the politeness right there. Let's get an upvote for this girl right quick. Um, now, woman, I apologize. Uh, so we're dealing with someone who's overweight and she's trying to do some sort of cardiovascular exercise, caloric deficit to deal with the sort of nutrition side of things, upper lower split, and some cardio to finish the lifting. Um, I don't see faults here. Now, when it comes to this sort of thing, when it comes to workout in general, uh, workouts really are predicated on your, your capabilities. It's, it's really all about you. The workout world is probably the most selfish universe imaginable because the whole thing is predicated on both what you're capable of, what you want, where you're looking to go, how you feel, uh, and, and you know your physiology, your condition. It's all about you all about you there's literally nothing in there that's about someone else so when we're talking about what would be a good idea what wouldn't be a good idea a lot of this comes down to like well what's what what's your condition right what's your body like right now um it, how are you going to respond to this is this even close to the kind of exercise you might get on a daily basis or is this way over um now when it comes to overweight individuals depending on how overweight they are um cardiovascular activity can cause some strain on the joints it can be rather difficult for someone who's very overweight to do any extensive amount of cardiovascular activity so the principle i would use 
to kind of get them going and make a difference and start seeing some sort of fat loss happening you see some progress towards their goal weight is just progressive overload so start with something that is manageable and then just slowly ramp that up um, that way we're constantly increasing their capabilities now if anybody wants to argue that there'll be metabolic adaptation and like the body's just going to get used to the amount of calories outputted and it's not going to make a difference and we're not going to see fat loss i have this to say to you one when it comes to overweight individuals especially we want to make sure that they're capable of living we want them to be capable of movement such that they feel confident and independent and able to tackle their life easily happily comfortably so i don't really care if there's metabolic adaptation that might happen on the way of me slowly ramping up their capabilities to the point where they can do say 30 minutes at a brisk walk without much of a challenge so hush i guess but more to the point is we are going to be slowly increasing caloric output um now major piece of the puzzle is always nutrition uh, a lot of people forget that you know hit the gym as much as you want lift all you want but if you're out here eating kfc and popeyes and all types of terrible food all the time impact that it's going to have on your day-to-day -day life and your physique outside of the gym is going to be minimal so we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to remain in a caloric deficit so that we can see this progress happen of course the deficit has to be such that it's manageable and that you can actually handle it it's not completely compromising your body's ability to function but enough that we can still see some moderate fat loss happening you know something that's manageable sustainable maintainable and, and safe uh and that is good as long as you can kind of use a there's some metabolic calculators that you can use to figure out generally where you sit and then use that to kind of figure out what the deficit should be it's it would be a pretty easy thing to see to, to calculate um but yeah um upper lower split i personally am a fan of um some of the methodologies used by or proposed by uh, dr len kravitz uh, out of the universe University of New Mexico? Yeah, University of New Mexico. Uh, and he proposed as far as like improving um, the the caloric output and more maximizing caloric output over a workout by doing upper and lower exercises within the same the same day, the same workout. He, he proposed that that was actually a better way of going about it. And I've seen some pretty great results from clients when, when they do that. And they do it, of course, consistently. Uh, that's another major piece of this puzzle. Is, is this something you can do consistently? Can you do this exercise routine on a regular basis such that you are able to start, what are we, middle of April, uh, and then work your way through and keep doing that through May? june july august september all the way through the year into next year is this something you can maintain this is a pattern you can actually uphold um, because without consistency a lot of these things are just sort of pointless um and the cardio to finish the lifting i don't see a problem with that again you can keep it relatively light use it as a sort of cool down as well and that would be a perfectly fine way to go about things i think uh, you know um, intensity plays a big role into how much of a good or bad idea this may be um but i don't necessarily think that it's it's overkill especially since the other sort of cardio that you're doing is just walking uh to kind of get some steps in just some nice moderate walking um okay so sally nine my advice to her would be that you want to make sure that you pay attention to your body as much as humanly possible pay attention to any cues it gives you letting you know that this is too much or how oh, maybe even if this is too little i have a little bit more in me um pay attention to any cues in terms of soreness you know how quickly you bounce back from a workout if you start noticing that getting longer and longer and it's getting harder and harder to feel fully healed after a workout it might be time to start considering you know cutting back a little bit doing a week where you do a deload so 50 percent volume 50 percent intensity uh, and then do that for a week let your body sort of catch up on the healing and then come back you may even be at a point where you need like a full complete dropout just a rest week in its entirety uh, my old my old ass definitely, definitely needs that more often than not and i'm on one of those right now actually uh, so a rest week can be hugely beneficial just to let your your muscles recuperate and let your central nervous system kind of catch up and uh, allow the stimulus to sort of fade and become less of a problem so that everything can kind of go back to normal and your 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 whole system isn't sort of in fight or flight mode freaking out that you know you're under attack and that the system's collapsing under the weight of the stimulus that you're putting it through in this case the workout 
So yeah, pay attention to how your body is feeling. Pay, pay close attention to how you feel. And you know, if you notice it's a little bit mush, back off. But I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, just take it slow and then work your way up. Oh, okay. Uh, Druidette. Sounds like a good plan. The only way to know if the cardio is overkill is whether you're losing weight too quickly or if you're exhausted beyond normal. Yeah, basically what I was saying. You know, watch to make sure you're not overtraining, but as long as you can kind of keep note of those cues and really just pay attention to how you're feeling and, you know, not ignore when you're feeling a little gassed out and over over tired you should be okay and like losing weight too quickly i mean what is losing weight too quickly for for especially someone who's overweight the the rate at which they lose weight can be a lot faster than you know people who are closer to an average weight and so you know even that's a very it depends type of thing uh so again take the weight too quickly part as a grain of salt but hey nonetheless pretty damn good advice you know what drew that have an upvote. There you go. Um, I think I think we can move we can move further. So, her in a twenty-two <sighs> portion control. This is one I can speak to pretty personally because I love food. Oh God, I love food so much. I I deeply deeply love food, and. It can be problematic when you have something you deeply love staring you in the face and it conflicts with the need to stop before you have annihilated all of it. Um, strategies for dealing with this are many and all much easier in theory than they are in actual practice so don't let anybody come at you telling you like oh like it's simple it simply is is as you said it's simply as it sounds it all sounds very simple but when you actually get down to the nitty-gritty of doing it that's when things get really challenging so um here's some of the pieces of advice that i find really helpful one um containers lots of containers bro like if I make food for a week, the best way I know how to deal with it to keep everything portion controlled is to have, like, if it's 10 meals that I'm making or five meals, whatever. So say five meals for the sake of the math and the ease of the, the whole thinking through the problem. If I make food enough for five meals, I have five containers all the exact same size, and I split that whole amount that I've made into five equal portions. Bought, like, close those containers, stick them in the fridge don't think about that anymore not as a whole that whole thing ain't yours anymore as far as you're concerned one of those is monday next is tuesday another is wednesday another thursday and the last one friday that's how you think about those now you're not thinking about them in terms of this is all my food it it hits different when you're faced with the idea of I might be still hungry, but if I eat another one, I lose a day's worth of food. Um, I also usually uh, tend to only have enough food ready to actually do five, like a, a week's worth. And the reason for that is, I mean, I don't really have a lot of time to be cooking in the middle of the week. Um, so if I don't have the time to cook in the middle of the week and I have cooked food when i do have time enough for one week i know that eating an extra day's worth of food means i simply starve that day that is so undesirable now that being said you can't kill the inner glutton and that's just what that is and i know this well because the inner glutton has existed in me for well over 30 years now so I, I know that it's something that it's a battle constantly. So best way I know how to deal with that is cheat days. Give yourself a cheat day. Know that on that cheat day, all hell breaks loose and then there is no need to pay attention to any rules, guidelines, regulations, uh, portion controlling out the goddamn window, order yourself out some food and just eat, eat bro. 
feed the beast. Uh, one of the reasons to say that is because many years ago I read a study about uh, willpower, and it was found in the study that willpower was a finite resource, meaning you run out of it. You use it, you run out. It takes you know a certain period of time to replenish, usually about a day, but in a day you only have so much to work with. If you spend every day fighting, 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 I mean, you're eventually going to tap yourself out. I mean, even if it is that you're just sort of like barely keeping up on a long term basis, that's just not something that's maintainable. If you give yourself a break, though, that gives you the ability to back off and let everything recharge. There's nothing like having that recharge to keep you on track. So give yourself that cheat day. It'll make all the difference in the world if you don't have it already. Um, but during those sort of like I got to do what I got to do periods, you got portions. These portions are simply what you're going to eat for those days. You just set up what you're going to eat for that day, and that's all you're going to eat for that day, and that's it. Now, to make those portions hit a little harder, I would highly recommend you go about increasing water intake. Increasing liquids can make a huge difference. A, from the perspective of keeping yourself well hydrated, that proper hydration can lead to much better performance and just an overall increase in feeling of well-being. But uh, you also fill yourself up which hugely beneficial if you're trying not to keep feeling hungry such that you want to keep eating after you're finished the portion so sort of a double whammy there win-win that would be my suggestion and it helps a great deal um now if you still feel that you know you want to eat more you can buy yourself you know healthy snacks to have but i would say after you finish your portioned meal wait five minutes five minutes then go ahead if you still feel like eating it after five minutes oh another worthwhile thing you could do is you could when you're eating eat purposefully make sure that you're really being purposeful and having a lot of tent intent behind your eating and really pay attention to each bite chew it you know the full i think like 20 times but the point is take your time through the eating process uh, this will give your body enough time to catch up with your brain so that when, you know, the food hits your stomach and they actually get to the point where you're full and you're supposed to be satiated, your stomach can actually send that signal up to your brain and that signal can be heard. And then your body can respond in kind by shutting the process down and be like, we're done. We don't need to be hungry anymore. Um, a lot of times people who eat quickly tend to be people who find themselves feeling like they are just black holes sucking up all the food in their, in their path. So... Let's see, what are the responses though? So let's check these out. Econofit says, put away leftovers before you start eating. After you eat, wait 10, 20 minutes and see if you're still hungry before continuing to eat. Won't work every time, but it should help. Yeah, it's a long time. I mean, you could take that five minutes and extend it to 20. I don't know, there's not really a problem with it. I just know I wouldn't last 20 minutes and would a bunch rather break the rule and just go about my business whereas five minutes seems more manageable to me i mean but again if you can handle 10 20 minutes do your thing like power to you like, go ahead but not a bad response you know i definitely said oh you know what also earn a 22 catch that up vote oh um weighing is most accurate but something you can implement without a food scale is just reducing the size of the plate or bowl you're eating out of it doesn't have to be a huge change but you naturally can't put as much food on a smaller plate as you would a larger plate or fill up that large plate mostly with veggies then whatever else you were going to eat this gives volume to the plate but you're able to reduce portion of your main meal okay Here's the thing. And you know what? I'm going at Alex Azam as well as Taco Pizza. Both y'all can catch it. Um, so Alex Azam, before I move on, you'll see why these two are related in my opinion. You could just cook less. Measure things out before you cook. Hard to eat more than 700 calories if you only cook a 700 calorie portion. Now, part of why I find that this doesn't really satisfy me as an answer is the fact that what he's talking about are behavioral, ish behavioral issues. He's talking about behavioral issues and issues that involve his sort of ability to process this, to, to conquer this. This is, this is all about patterns and, and his personality and his actions. But you're just saying, like, measure things out. Dog, 
that's not going to change how he acts. Or her. I mean, I don't know what gender this person is. It's not going to change how they act, is my point. Um, I can measure things all day long. It's not going to make me less hungry. That's just not how that works. So sometimes it's not about tackling the are you eating 700 calories or did you measure it? It's more about tackling the why you are even eating more. Why are you hungry still? What is missing from either your diet or sometimes your life? Because eating and emotions very closely tied to each other. They're extremely tight knit. Like there's a very, very deep connection between those two for a lot of people. Sometimes it's cultural, sometimes it's social, sometimes it's just, you know, a matter of their, it's bred into their past. It's something that they grew up with, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't think that your answers, either of you, really come down to conquering and helping them deal with the sort of behavioral thing that lies at the core of it. Um, that's not to say I gave like a very philosophically in-depth answer on that. There's only so much time I have to really answer any of these questions. Uh, but the point is, if we're trying to help someone change their behavior because they're having trouble tackling it, even though they've tried to implement strategies and they simply don't work, we need to figure out why the strategies aren't working. And if the strategies aren't working because it's not dealing with the core issue, then we need to deal with the core issue. It's not just keep throwing strategies at them. That doesn't work. That's not going to work. So, I mean, back to Herna22. It's going to sound weird, but do a little soul searching. See if perhaps something in your life doesn't feel like it's fitting quite right. I know personally, I hit those moments myself when the reason I'm eating more, the reason I'm just constantly, perpetually hungry is because I'm attempting to fill a void. Not in my stomach, in myself. That lacking, that gap, that emptiness that is felt by something lacking in your life. Emotionally, socially. I mean, nowadays with a lot of people still stuck at home, locked down. That feeling of lacking is intensifying. The void is feeling bigger and more unconquerable than ever. It's the reason I'm seeing so many people who are just rapidly gaining weight over the course of lockdown. They attempt to fill the emptiness with food. And until you conquer the thing that is causing you to feel that void, such that you're not eating to fill a void, you're eating to fulfill your needs nutritionally, you're going to end up right back at struggling with portion control. It's, it's, it's inevitable. So... Do a little soul searching. See if perhaps maybe you do feel like something's not quite right. Something's not sitting with you in the way that it should. And if that's the case, take some steps to tackle it. It might be time to just sort of put your head down and charge head on at it and really like meet it where it is. Because if you don't, it's just going to keep running your life. And it sounds like running your kitchen. So... Uh, that might be worth doing. And I don't, I think, I think that measuring things can be a very quick path for some people to disordered behavior, you know, disordered eating where you're counting every calorie down to the damn single digit. And, you know, you're, you're making these decisions, not because it's for the betterment of your health, but because it means a lower number. And that, that is just, I've never, I don't often see that go in a positive direction, not in the long term. Uh, and I'm much more a proponent of, of, long-term solutions lifestyle changes that allow for long-term solutions such as you can live with them be healthy be happy and it can be maintained for an extended period without having to like question it or think about it or be worried about it ruining you on uh, on a physical or emotional level now that being said taco pizza did say something about a smaller plate and i don't know if they necessarily intended it but there have been studies done on people who eat food on larger plates versus smaller plates and they've given people the same amount of food on a large plate and the same amount of food on a smaller plate and what they found is that the people who eat it off a smaller plate because it's filling up more of the plate actually perceive themselves as being more full because it seems like they're eating more since it's filling up more of the plate. So the smaller plate concept actually does hold some weight. I would definitely say give that one a try because that can be a great way to circumnavigate this whole sort of behavioral issue and at least give you a jump start on the sort of act that would get you closer to 
controlling portions while you start tackling the whole is there something else that's causing this and if there isn't then you've just found a strategy that might be valuable for a long-term solution but if it if it is that there is something else missing at least you have something to kind of get the ball rolling and that's helpful uh so you know what taco pizza not sure you intended it but pretty decent uh, suggestion right there also adding more veggies to the plate not only does it add more volume to the plate you know allowing it to feel like it's more but at the same time the the extra fiber and the vitamins and minerals that will be in those vegetables will help provide a help a boost to that feeling of satiety and feeling of satisfaction after your meal so give that a go too that can be definitely very helpful I'm going to hope to God that this is enough content because quite frankly, there's only so long I can spend here reading comments and stuff. If it's not, I'm going to rethink this and I'm going to have to start this way earlier in the night. Uh, I'm going to be back as soon as possible. I'm hoping to do a couple of these a month. I mean, this is the first round, so my editing is trash and I'm probably going to be terrible at it. It's going to take me forever. But, you know, as I get faster, a couple of months, you can probably expect something like that. Um, if you got any questions you want to ask me personally throw them into the comments I'd, I'd love to hear them so just like boom toss them into that comment section uh, i'll get at them as fast as i possibly can um uh, as far as uh reaching me is concerned you know you can find me on instagram uh seventh star fitness.com i'll put that somewhere here somewhere around there that, that summer it's gonna be in this general neighborhood but until then um stay shiny you guys because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place as we all shine together take it easy y'all